Hello and thanks for joining. Today we're going to be going over how to complete the non-residential Certificate of Compliance NRCC form for Mechanical. The first thing we'll need to do is locate and download our form. You can do that by going to the California Energy Commission's website, hovering your mouse over Rules and Regulations, and selecting Building Energy Efficiency. You can also search Title 24 Part 6 in the keyword search bar. You'll see Building Energy Efficiency Standards Title 24 as the first item under Program Information. And today we'll be completing these forms using the 2019 Building Energy Efficiency Standards. Buildings permitted on or after January 1, 2020 must comply with the 2019 standards. You'll see 2019 Compliance Forms. And we're looking for the non-residential compliance forms. You'll see the four form types used in Title 24 Part 6, and again today we're going to be looking for and completing the NRCC forms. One of the great features of having dynamic forms is the ability to have only one form per compliance category. So here you'll see 10 forms, one for each compliance category regulated under Title 24 Part 6, and again we are going to be completing the mechanical form labeled MCH. We will go ahead and open that download, and when you do, you'll notice you get a warning message that says, your PDF viewer may not be able to display this type of document. Now this is because the web browser plugin for Adobe Acrobat Reader does not support dynamic forms, so we will go ahead and download that directly to our desktop with the download link that can be found in the top right hand corner of your screen, and save it somewhere you will remember. When you open your downloaded dynamic form, you want to make sure to use Adobe Acrobat Reader. Always use Adobe Acrobat Reader when completing dynamic forms. Adobe Acrobat Reader is a free software that can easily be downloaded by going to adobe.com or by searching Adobe Acrobat Reader Download. Adobe Acrobat Reader is the only software that is compatible with the dynamic features of this form. If you typically use Bluebeam, CAD, Adobe Pro, or other PDF reading software, you will need to use Adobe Acrobat Reader to complete your dynamic form, and then add the completed form back to your plan set in Bluebeam, CAD, or other PDF reading software of choice. Later in this video, we will cover that process in detail. At this point, you may be wondering, what is a dynamic form? Dynamic forms allow the user to engage directly with the content and have the ability to react to user input in real time. These digital forms make demonstrating compliance easier by limiting information requests to only the requirements applicable to your building type and scope of work, as well as having the ability to auto-populate values based on user selection. Dynamic forms are shorter, which means less paperwork for everyone, easier to find and complete because there's only one form per compliance category, and provide more guidance on requirements applicable to your project via code section links and tooltips, which can be found by going to the top right hand corner of each table and hovering your mouse over the question mark. Now let's cover the basic structure of the mechanical form. The documentation author will indicate general information in Table A, such as climate zone, occupancy type, and condition floor area. These inputs are important because the form will limit information requests to only the requirements that apply to those climate zones, occupancy types, and condition floor area. The documentation author will then input their project scope in Table B. This table is important because it decides which tables to trigger throughout the form. For example, if our project is adding or altering a duct system, we would select duct work in table B and table L distribution would expand. You'll also notice that the distribution column in table C compliance results has ungrade itself and indicates no. This is another great feature of the dynamic forms, which is the ability to indicate compliance at the building component level as well as at the project level. For example, if we remove all building components from table B other than ductwork, head to the distributions table, which is table L as indicated in table C, quickly fill out the table so that distribution is in compliance. We will head back to table C and you will notice that the distribution column 
says yes, and as a result, table C indicates complies at the project level. However, the mandatory measure compliance row indicates does not comply. So now we'll head to the mandatory measure table and show you another great feature of the dynamic forms. Table Q, mandatory measure documentation location, is an easy way to include all mandatory measures in your plant set. If you have not used a separate mandatory measure note block, you will indicate no in table Q, which will trigger the rest of the table to expand. Then simply indicate the plan sheet location for all of the applicable mandatory measures. Once table Q is complete, we will head back to table C and find that the mandatory measure row indicates complies. Another great feature of the dynamic forms is the ability to indicate which NRCI or Certificate of Installation, NRCA or Certificate of Acceptance, as well as NRCV or Certificate of Verification is required based on building type and scope of work. For example, the NRCV MEC32 is required for high-rise residential projects that include local mechanical exhaust. So if we go ahead and trigger the ventilation table, indicate that the project is a high-rise residential project, and select one of three local exhaust types. The NRCV MEC32 now indicates yes for the building inspector. Before you add your compliance form to your plan set in order to submit to the local building department, you will want to confirm a few things. 1. Make sure Table C indicates complies at the project level. 2. You will need to sign as the documentation author and also get the responsible designer to sign off. You can do this by signing with your digital ID. If you don't have one, you can configure one here. 3. Make sure your project name and address have been added to the form and are accurate. Once you have completed those checks, you are ready to add this form to your plan set. If you typically use Adobe Acrobat Reader to create and store your project documents, your workflow does not change. If you use Bluebeam or another PDF software, you will need to save a copy of your completed compliance form and then print to PDF. You can do this by going to File, Print, and selecting Microsoft Print to PDF. This will create a static version of the form that will no longer be editable. You can then add this static version to your plan set using your PDF software of choice. Saving the completed file in Adobe Acrobat Reader is very important. Without this file, you will not be able to go back and make edits to the form as the static version you have added to your plan set will no longer be editable. Thanks for joining our short video. If you need information on one of the other nine Certificate of Compliance forms, Look for your form in our non-residential Certificate of Compliance introduction video series. For more in-depth information, you can check out the Energy Code ACE decoding talk on the 2019 non-residential dynamic forms, as well as the great handout associated with that decoding talk. Energy Code ACE also offers a Code and Coffee video series where we will take you through a specific project scenario using an example plan set and complete the form as if we were submitting to the local building department for a real project. You can find these resources on energycodeace.com or the Energy Code Ace YouTube page.